My name is Dean Pagliaro. I'm going to be your host today. Uh, again, I would like to thank Power Partners uh, for connecting us. This is great, and I just want to say thank you, my and everyone with the Hurricane. Thank you for joining us. They, they host great events uh, about once every uh, month, and uh, I highly recommend uh, uh, joining and uh, becoming an active member. So my, my experience, I think, is, is going to be useful and hopefully educational to you. Um, I've been living, uh, eating, sleeping, breathing uh, web and e-commerce literally since 92, since I was around 10 years old. Uh, I've uh, run my own businesses. I've uh, been director of consultancies. I've worked with hundreds of clients in dozens of industries. So I have a good, broad uh, understanding of the e-commerce industry on the whole, uh, the pros and cons of different platforms, uh, and most importantly, like the, the life cycle of businesses when they need certain platforms, when they need to re-platform, uh, what makes sense uh, for them, and when it makes sense uh, in terms of their needs. Uh, so today I'm going to be talking about e-commerce platforms. Uh, primarily, I'm going to focus on open source platforms, um, PHP, as well as some hosted platforms like uh, Shopify and so on. So, you know, obviously, uh, I want to try to get through this quickly and answer your questions. Um, so I'm going to kind of start right now in terms of going through the agenda. So first, I'll start with uh, the market share in the industry. So we're going to talk primarily about the, 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 the most popular, the most prominent platforms in the market today, just because that's likely what you'll be using. Uh, beyond that, we'll talk a little bit about pricing, uh, hosting, and templates, features, back office considerations like ERP and CRM, uh, security, and some final thoughts. Uh, before we begin, uh, just a quick question. Uh, how many folks are on Shopify? What about Magento? And WooCommerce? Okay. Okay, so I've been doing e-commerce since around 2000. Um, back then, uh, the systems were proprietary. You had to basically build them from scratch. Uh, a lot of people, uh, a lot of B businesses uh, and, and big companies basically built their own platforms. Uh, around 2007, um, well before then, uh, there were a lot of other smaller platforms uh, like OS Commerce, uh, Zencart, um, you, you may be familiar with these uh, or not. Um, they were decent platforms for what, they, for what they needed to do. They were oriented to small businesses. They weren't well coded. Uh, they were generally a conglomeration of dozens of co coders across the world, so the code tended to be horrendous and tended to be uh, you know, significant issues with bugs, uh, stability, uh, upgrade issues, and so on. Around 2007, um, Magento came online. Uh, Magento was unique um, in, in the respect that it was well architected, and it had a significant uh, technology and marketing effort behind it. So at the time, uh, you know, 2007, there were many other platforms that, that had the, the dominant market share, but uh, Magento, given its feature set, its uh, cost, which was free at the time, in terms of uh, what, what, what they went to market with, and uh, you know, its, its ability to scale and be extensible, really um, told myself and the company that I worked for that you know they were the, the platform uh, of the future and that would they would dominate uh, in, in a short period of time, which ended up actually happening. Um, so what we see here is we have, we have a spectrum of shopping carts. Uh, so we, we have Magento, which is the, the leading platform right now today, uh, the community edition. Um, so it is used by millions of, of stores online. It is free. Uh, it is very stable. It's been around for a very long time now. It has a tremendous feature set. Uh, it, it is um, scalable. So I work with companies using Magento Community Edition that were doing, you know, ten thousand dollars a year to companies doing, you know, fifteen million a year on the Community Edition. Uh, so it, it scales rather well. Uh, it has a, a great feature set out of the box, and it has a massive community behind it uh, in terms of extension developers, uh, consultancies, development shops, and so on. So for, for a lot of businesses that, that are looking to get started, uh, Magento is a very attractive uh, platform, um, especially the, the free edition, obviously. Uh, now there are some caveats with that in that Magento, while it's, while it's very feature rich and very capable, 
it requires more sophisticated resources to develop it and to design for it. So you do not um, get in bed with Magento unless you have the wherewithal as a business or as an investor to basically pay decent resources to develop your site and to maintain it going forward, okay? That is just a warning, because uh, I know a lot of businesses who, who move on Magento prematurely when they're not bringing enough cash flow, and that basically shuts them down uh, in, in short order because they make a fundamental mistake early on. Um, so Magento Community Edition uh, generally is good for retailers that are, let's say, on the order of, I don't know, doing zero to you know $5 million in revenue a year, okay? Uh, generally, you're, you know, you're, you're, you're looking to basically do projects. The initial project for like a Magento community site starts easily at, at you know, fifteen thousand dollars for most development shops, and can easily go north of a hundred k. All right, so that's what you're looking at just in terms of a Magento project. Support uh, generally, you know, will will, will have to be uh, done on a regu fairly regular basis in terms of security upgrades, patches, that kind of thing. So you, you're going to need uh, someone who's knowledgeable to be on a retainer, a support shop, a partner to basically help maintain your site, grow it, enhance it, and so on. Uh, I love Magento. I, I, I ran a, I was director of an e-commerce consultancy where we basically uh, did nothing but Magento for about eight years. Uh, so I, I know the pros, I know the cons. It's great in terms of uh, various industries. Uh, it's, it's kind of like the Swiss Army knife of e-commerce platforms. It's a good fit for a, a lot of different scenarios, but it's not a perfect fit necessarily for any one, right? So it, it's very capable and, and flexible and adaptable. Uh, and that's what's, that's what's really its strong suit. All right, uh, any questions so far? Uh, WooCommerce um, is a add-on to the Woo, to the, um, um, the WordPress uh, content management system, the CMS. So uh, WordPress is the number one CMS platform, I believe, on the planet. We probably have over a million installs. So WooCommerce is more of a small business, uh, small retailer uh, e-commerce plugin that gets added to uh, um, uh, WordPress. Now, the benefit of this is that it plugs right into WordPress. WordPress is a phenomenal uh, CMS and a great uh, online marketing platform. It has very strong uh, SEO uh, and is you know fairly robust in terms of feature set. Now, the WooCommerce itself. Is it's not really that feature rich. So if you're a retailer and you just want to sell products, uh, it's a it's a great choice for you. But it's it's a good fit for sites that are primarily oriented around content, blogs, uh, media sites, sites that are doing uh, various publications that are producing content, where content is the first the primary focus of the site, and the shop is the secondary focus of the site. All right. Whereas Magento, it, its primary primary focus should be e-commerce, uh, because its CMS is not not robust at all. Um, so uh, you have to factor that in, just from a, a decision point standpoint. All right. So uh, a lot a lot of businesses are already on uh, uh, WordPress, uh, and if you want to start selling your products, um, you know, uh, WooCommerce is a very attractive uh, addition. Now, with that said. Uh, I highly recommend looking into marrying a strong CMS like WordPress and a Magento. The benefit of that is you get the best of both worlds. You get a strong CMS that could, that could basically manage great layouts, that can produce great content, uh, that's very easy to use from a content production standpoint, management update standpoint, um, and you get a great e-commerce platform. So there, there are extensions on the, on the market that allow you to actually marry both of them. So if you're considering, if you're already on WordPress or you're, or you're considering Magento and you have a need for a strong CMS, uh, take a look at you know, WordPress, take a look at Joomla, or Drupal. Uh, all three of them are, are rather strong content management systems and they, that they all have capabilities of being integrated into Magento. So if you want to put content into the e-commerce platform or, or put the e-commerce product into the CMS, the integration allows you to do that. And the integration allows you to basically have a, a unified session. So if you're on the part of the website where it's just CMS, where you're just reading an article, say a blog, and then the, the user goes to another section, the session will remain uh, the same, right? So you, you won't have, uh, you know, like a user uh, login in, in the upper right-hand side that, that will have problems, right? So definitely consider that if, if you're, you know, a, a business that 
uh, wants to generate a large amount of traffic, right? Uh, so mo most of you are using social media for your e-commerce shops to, to generate um, you know, traffic to your site, right? So you're obviously gonna need a strong CMS. So this in particular is, is good for small retailers that wanna generate large amounts of, of traffic uh, organically, uh, and they need a strong blog, for instance. So just something to keep in mind. So this is the top one, one million sites right here. Uh, that, that's, uh, this is the uh, Headworks uh, survey that, that, that they uh, published. So this is the top one million sites. Uh, if, you, if you look at a smaller subset like the, the internet retailer, top 5,000 or something like that, it will obviously have different proportions and focus mainly on mid-market enterprise systems. Top million sites defined by revenue? Defined by ranking, most likely, uh, by the Alexia uh, ranking system in terms of just site popularity. So this is based on uh, an overall site popularity. So that there are services that, that can rank the traffic, uh, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So there are sites like Alexa that, that, that can tell you where your site ranks in the, in, in the top, you know, 100, so thousand. Uh, so obviously, if, if, if you pick any subset, it's going to change the statistics. So if you look at certain industries like uh, uh, widgets or, or something that's more industrial or something that's B2B, you're going to have completely different e-commerce platforms, right? So this is primarily focused to B2C retailers uh, and, and, and the top you know, million websites. Now, obviously, you know, if you're just looking at the internet retailer top 500, where you're talking about sites that are doing anywhere between 15 million and 500 million, you're going to see demand where, and you're going to see high risk, right? That, that's where the that's where the big companies play. Uh, this is for the overall. This is the landscape for the overall industry as it breaks out. All right. Yeah. Very few companies are on that. So uh, we, we definitely talk about it. Uh, it's just, you know, the, the, the popular e-commerce platforms tend to be these, these up here. So what's the difference between Magento Enterprise and So that's a good question. So the, the Magento Enterprise is a paid uh, solution. Uh, they, they have an annual license of, uh, I believe it's 17700 nowadays. Um, so that's something to consider. Uh, the the enterprise edition basically there's a lot of different uh, benefits to it. Uh, it has better security. It, it has better performance in terms of speed, which is critical if you want to have better uh, search engine rankings. Uh, so it's faster in terms of the database calls and so on. Uh, it has like full page caching and so on. Uh, beyond that, it has out of the box more robust um, uh, ex extensions already built into it. Uh, like loyalty programs and stuff like that. So the, the difference between like a small business that's just selling products and an enterprise business is that they want to optimize nearly everything. Uh, and so Magento Enterprise allows you to optimize everything or, or to a high degree everything. Um, and so it, it's much oriented around performance and, and very robust online marketing can, uh, 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 needs and campaigns because the, the folks who are on Magento Enterprise they should generally be above one million in revenue per year. Uh, I really think the threshold should be more along the five million in revenue. Uh, their site should be generating to be on enterprise. But there's a little bit of a debate there. It's just smaller market share. You're, t you're talking uh, almost no percentage in terms of the overall. There's overall 100 e-commerce platforms. Uh, so that, that's a difficult question because the, the, the themes really are what should be analyzed in terms of their responsiveness. They all come with themes that are out of the box or responsive nowadays. Um, a lot of, so, but when you build the theme or you look at the native theme, you generally aren't going to use that necessarily. A lot of people purchase third party themes that are natively responsive and added to the platform. So when you're looking at responsiveness, uh, optimizations and, and whatnot, you really should analyze the theme that you're, you know, you're, you're, you're selecting for the platform and adding it. Any other questions? Uh, 
Yes. Uh, so uh, there is a tool called Built With uh, that allows you to analyze any e-commerce site uh, or any website uh, and see what they're using, what they're tying into, uh, and, and so on. So I highly recommend Built With. Uh, it's, it's a great tool for basically reverse engineering and figuring out what your competitor is using. Uh, Built With it is, is a website, it's a, it's, a, it's a tool that allows you to basically, it's free uh, for, for if you just want to like analyze your, comp your competitors and stuff like that. Um, if you're in sales or marketing and, and you're selling a product or a service uh, to re retailers and whatnot, uh, you can also subscribe to the more uh, enterprise list. Yes, yeah, great service. Oh, uh, so a, a few other things. So Magento, WooCommerce, uh, those are, are platforms that are called on-premise or, or, or self-hosted. So those are platforms where you would purchase the, the shopping cart and you would actually um, you know, subscribe to some kind of hosting plan and have it hosted for you. Uh, whereas Shopify, which is a f phenomenal uh, you know, uh, uh, e-commerce solution for small businesses, uh, that's a, a fully hosted solution, a SaaS cloud solution, where if you're a small business and you want something turnkey that doesn't require uh, really much development knowledge at all, uh, that is fairly inexpensive, uh, you know, Shopify, big commerce, those types of solutions are, are really great for businesses that are just starting out or, or, that, or that don't have much uh, advanced complex e-commerce needs like integrating with uh, ERP systems and CRM systems. So before I move on, any last questions before I move on to the next slide? Okay, great. So um, this slide is about a year old. Um, so the, the pricing for these different solutions ranges. So as I said, Magento Community Edition is free, so you don't have to worry about paying for that. Uh, Enterprise is now 177, I believe. Shopify is on a monthly plan, so uh, you know it ranges really dramatically depending on, on, on what your, your needs are. So it's e-commerce. WooCommerce is, a, is another free extension, though they have plans, I think, to make it uh, commercial. Uh, and Spree Commerce is another uh, new solution that came on the market a few years ago. So in terms of, I'm just looking at the, 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 the most popular, the most prominent solutions here, because literally there are over 100 platforms and solutions out there. Um, so what we're looking at here is just are they hosted um, on you know, your uh, server? So deployed means it's hosted on your server. SaaS means it's hosted in the cloud. You can see just a, a, an outline of some of their costs. Uh, the one major benefit of Shopify that I think is phenomenal is its speed. Uh, so when I started using Shopify for retailers, I was rather impressed with how fast those sites load. Uh, that by itself is, is worth its weight in gold. Uh, because speed often translates into uh, better uh, search engine rankings. So uh, if there's really one reason why I love Shop uh, Shopify, it's because it's very fast. Magento uh, is, is, is a phenomenal platform, but it, it's, it's, a, it's major challenge over the years, and it's continuing challenge, is performance. So anyone who knows Magento and has been in the Magento industry knows that Magento's performance is always an issue. Uh, and you have to optimize it, and you have to tune it, and you have to go with hosts that, that, that are specifically designed for Magento. Do you have a question? Uh, are there any specific things uh, specific to how a store is set up and run that generally tend to kind of lead to a store becoming very, very slow on Magento? So if it's like the number of SKUs or you know, a certain number of years of intense modification, anything in particular? So. There's a difference in terms of community edition and enterprise. Just natively, I think Magento purposely uh, wants Magento community edition to be slower. Uh, by uh, obviously because they want to push merchants to, to buy the enterprise edition. Uh, and by slower, I'm talking milliseconds. I'm talking like two, two and a half seconds, two seconds. You know what I mean? So it, 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 you're getting into some very fine detail. Um, the, it, it's just the, the Magento community edition doesn't come with, I believe, full page caching and, and a few other bells and whistles. Uh, those are those come with Magento Enterprise, but what a lot of um, companies do that are starting out on Magento Community, what they'll do is they'll just buy an add-on uh, and, and they'll get that capability. So full page caching is really one of the things that will get the one of the biggest boosts for your site. 
Um, so I would, I would recommend adding that if, if you're using Community Edition. The, also, just so you know, the difference between Magenta Community Edition and Enterprise, there's about 40 or something odd uh, extensions that, that Magento Community Edition doesn't have that uh, it, the Enterprise Edition does have. Now, there is a line of thought and an argument from a lot of developers, especially European developers, I don't know why, uh, that, that argue that you should almost always use Magento Community Edition and augment it with a lot of extensions. That is fine uh, for, for people who have the capability of augmenting their site, customizing it to a high degree, and have such development knowledge. Uh, my recommendation, though, is to be careful with the amount of extensions you add. The more extensions you add, uh, the more complicated and challenges you'll have in the future when you upgrade. Because just because the platform is upgraded and there are patches and whatnot, doesn't mean the extensions are. So you have to. One of the risks is is these extensions will eventually have to be replaced by other extensions, uh, or they'll have to be rewritten completely from scratch, uh, or you'll have to do some some significant uh, triage. So, and I've, I've seen it uh, across the board with, with extensions. Um, so just be careful with the amount of extensions you use. Uh, try to go with the best extension uh, developers in whatever ecosystem you, 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 you are using. Uh, just because that's at least a safer bet. They're not going to go out of business next year. Uh, they usually have better code. They usually update, it, update their extensions uh, whenever the platform is upgraded. Uh, so like the Headworks, who came up with uh, that, that, that first slide, uh, the head, Headworks in, in Magento, the Magento ecosystem is one of the leaders when it comes to um, extension development. So I, I prefer going with extension developers or, or extension development companies that are just the leaders because I know I'm going to mitigate my long-term risk uh, related to extensions. How scalable is Shopify? I mean, what size of a business can it support? So Shopify is generally seen uh, to range from zero to five million dollars. Um, now, I, I, my rule of thumb is around a million, to be honest with you, uh, because once a business gets to, to generating around a million dollars of revenue per year, uh, they start to break into more advanced online marketing areas that require uh, higher degrees of customization. Uh, whereas uh, the Shopify ecosystem has, or Marketplace has, a lot of extensions for that kind of stuff. It just it gets to be difficult to customize those extensions because uh, the system is is very limited in terms of what you can customize. Uh, zero, zero to five million. I would say zero to five million uh, is is generally what uh, is, is what's published online in terms of reports and stuff. My rule of thumb though is around a million. To be honest. Can I chime in? Something. So another thing that's very very important for Shopify is it's not open source. Once you start your entry level. Is build your business and scale to a certain point, you can't transfer over to Magento or you can't transfer over anywhere else. You've got to start from scratch. So if you're planning on having a real business, you might be cheaper to do it the right way the first time. If you don't have a huge budget and you just want to test it and see what's happening, then go with Shopify because it might be a little bit less, uh, a little less time consuming and less work on your part. So, 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 so migrate so, early if you're going to Look, uh, some people have family businesses some people have factories, some people have connections that others don't. So if you're dealing with a big with a big meal, there might be a, you might need a bigger cost at one point. So, mm -hmm. so it's into, more expensive starting up. So yeah. this gets into needs assessment. So uh, building your business on an e-commerce platform is a big decision. Because it could cost you tons of money down the road. So when when evaluating platforms, wh whether you know you're just starting out or you're currently or you're currently on a platform and you're looking at to re-platform. You have to project where your business is going to be about two to three years down the road. So if, if your marketing projections tell you that you're going to be in like the five or ten million dollar range in three years, go with the right platform early. Something that's going to you're going to be able to move into if, if that's your space. If your online marketing projections, you know, say you're going to top out at a million dollars in, in three years, then you can go with one of the more um, you know entry level uh, systems, user to use systems. So it, it really it comes down to business planning uh, and just kind of what is your ambition level, uh, what, what is what's you know how many products you have, how how complex uh, of a future technology needs do you have. So if you're B two B is a completely other topic, but if if you have if you're coming from like an ERP system, um, you know then that will change the, the decision point dramatically. <coughs> Because then you want to align your, your e-commerce platform with whatever your ERP system is usually, and make sure that there's a strong integration between 
between the two. Because I've seen scenarios where you spend more on the integration between your two systems, your back office system and your e-commerce system, than you do on, on, on your e-commerce side. So you, you have to factor in where your business will be down the road. Are you going to have an ERP? Are you going to have a CRM? Are you going to have a marketing automation platform? What, where, where will you be probably in two to three years? Uh, and so Magento is great because it has a tremendous amount of integrations uh, and integration partners. Um, so if you if you see yourself uh, going in that direction, I would I would definitely uh, consider a Magento just because it's very strong when it comes to integrations. Um, uh, so on the topic of uh, templates, I, I don't want to get too much into it, but. For, for most e-commerce websites starting out, uh, you'll end up using a, a theme, just because it's, it's far more cost effective. They, they, they tend to be rather robust. If you go with the right theme uh, development company, it will actually be well coded too. Uh, the challenge with themes, and just something to keep in mind, is that they tend to be bloated in terms of code. Themes are made for a mass audience. So their, their, their code tends to have far more than is needed in terms of accounting for every scenario for a vast array of industries, right? So the themes are great, short-term solutions for getting a, a really nice looking responsive theme on your site, front end of your, your site, uh, cost effectively, right? Um, but the downside is it will slow your site down because uh, the, the code tends to be a little bit bloated, right? So if you're gonna use a theme, just factor in that it's gonna hurt your performance a little bit, which will hurt your, your search engine rankings uh, a little bit. Uh, and it may also hurt your, your, your user experience. Now, you've got you to weigh the pros and cons of that, the short-term pros and the long-term cons. Uh, uh, um, so every, every e-commerce platform nowadays has usually a marketplace that, that has themes from, from third-party providers and so on. So when, when, you're anal when you're analyzing what theme you want to go with, I highly recommend using audit tools. There's a ton of uh, audit tools out there where you can just direct an audit tool at a theme that you're considering purchasing, and it, it'll tell you how fast the theme is, it'll tell you what errors the theme has, uh, it'll tell you all sorts of other issues, if it's not all responsive and so on. So whenever you're considering buying a theme, analyze it first. Run an audit tool. It takes five minutes, um, and it's free. It, it comes down to um, uh, like a higher degree of uh, like products, more complexity there, um, a, a lot more robustness in terms of some of the online marketing feature set and so on. Uh, the reason I'm asking is because um, now we're, we, we do the same thing, right? We need to add the same day delivery uh, option to the, uh, the shopping methods. And it works with our little, but I don't know if it's going to also work with uh, shopping So, so uh, for, for same day, there are definitely yeah. Tons of add-ons for that uh, with, with the Shopify marketplace. There's only better shipping, and it doesn't really. Work. Mm. So, um, so we're running our application. You are. Right. We're seeing the shipping. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'd have to look into that particular extension or, or need, uh, but I, I've done it before, and th there there was a fair amount of extensions that I remember for that particular need. Um, so, uh, if you want, we can talk later. Okay. Yeah. Uh, any other questions? <coughs> okay, uh, so e-commerce is, is a gigantic topic. Features are a gigantic topic. Uh, any given platform may have hundreds, thousands of features, literally, if you, if you line onto them out and, and you want to compare and contrast them, okay? I've, I've done this. It's a, it's a boring exercise. Uh, so this is just a really high-level snapshot of some more prominent features that you'll see that you may want to consider uh, when evaluating platforms, okay? Uh, Mobile-friendly storefronts, customer reviews, loyalty programs, affiliate programs, multi-language storefronts, multi-site storefronts, vending shopping cart, SEO, customer segmentation, personalization. Um, so you, you'll, this is a, a good idea, and I'm going to post this online so that you have access to this. Uh, I also have um, a far more complex uh, spreadsheet that, that line items out like 300 features if, if you're really into that kind of thing. Um, so this is just a high level. Uh, as you can see, all modern shopping carts, because of uh, the, the change in uh, the, our technology uh, usages and behaviors, i.e. using mobile devices, 
Uh, all all e-commerce platforms nowadays are mobile friendly. They just are. Uh, so um, and beyond that, you know, what what I would say is when you get into some of the more complex online marketing things, loyalty programs, affiliate programs, that kind of stuff, uh, and cart reminders, that's when you get into paid extensions, that's when you get into enterprise platforms, that's what really separates the, the entry, entry level uh, platforms that are out of the box from the enterprise platforms. So most every solution allows you to add extensions to your e-commerce solution. Some of them are free, some of them are paid. So again, with extensions, evaluate each extension, look at the customer reviews for the extension, make sure that they actually have customer service, because you will run into issues and you will go back to them and you will want them to you know, fix whatever their bug is. Uh, and you don't want to incur the cost of having to pay for their, their bad code or their bad extension. Okay. Any uh, questions for the law? Again, this is just a, another kind of thing that differentiates uh, more enterprise level uh, solutions uh, from more entry level solutions. Uh, when you get into back office integrations and security considerations. Um, so payment gateways are ubiquitous nowadays. Uh, all of the major payment gateways are, are generally supported by every solution. Um, mobile responsiveness, again, you can see here. Um, you know, in terms of you know the the, the, the admin being responsive, in, in this case, uh, Magento Community Edition uh, is, has limitations there. Um, drop shipping, which is really a great way of uh, of uh, you know getting more products in your catalog, uh, is a fairly complex thing to do and to do it right. So you know, if if your business model orients around drop shipping. Uh, definitely know what's, what solution you're getting into and how they're going to integrate with your drop shippers. Uh, the last thing you want to do is have to pay for a, a custom uh, proprietary integration. Uh, fraud protection tools, um, almost no platforms really come with that, uh, except like the hosted solutions. The hosted solutions come with that out of the box. Um, but uh, Magento, Community, Enterprise, they all have lots of solutions around fraud, prevent, fraud pr protection. Um, then you know advanced custom reporting. So as you get more complex, as your needs become more complex, uh, you may want to have more business intelligence, more information at your fingertips to make better business decisions. Uh, at at the point uh, where your business needs more reporting, you may want to you know create your own custom reports uh, via extensions and so on that you can add to the platform. Uh, a lot of uh, clients that I work with, they actually have their own reporting tools or business intelligent tools, and they what they tend to do is they integrate with the database uh, to get that information and then to correlate that with other data, like from the CRM and ERP system. So depending on what level of business you're at, you may just want to add a, a reporting extent, extension to the admin, or you may want to actually tie that in to something that more that centralizes all the, the, the data analytics and reporting. Uh, any questions before we move on? So final thoughts, uh, there's no clear winner here because it's so subjective. You must decide what's best for your specific needs. Take a look at your budget, how specific your design requirements are, and what kind of integrations you're looking for, and only then should you decide which platform to go with. So businesses are starting out, uh, it actually may be a little bit easier to make a decision uh, than businesses that are uh, already uh, running and whatnot uh, that are looking to do uh, re-platforming. Uh, you want to make the right decision uh, whenever uh, you're, you're considering platforming or selecting an e-commerce platform. Just the cost down the road could be significant. Um, so, you know, uh, I have uh, various tools and, and spreadsheets. I would, be, I would be happy to share it with, uh, you know, the, the Hair Partners uh, website uh, so that you can have access to that information uh, if you're currently in the process of selecting a platform for your new business or if you're an existing business and you're looking to replatform. Uh, any questions? Uh, What's your budget? I mean, that's for the, that pretty much solves the question, like how much money do you have to spend it? On? So what's your budget, what's your, what's your capabilities, right? So if, if you're going to go with a self-hosted platform, um, you know, they're, they're, it's, it's very attractive to go with, uh, you know, a shared host. Significant downsides. So while you may be spending 5 or $10 a month for, for that host, uh, you will get extremely slow service, and don't ever use GoDaddy. If anyone's using GoDaddy, don't. 
Uh, so they, they shouldn't be they shouldn't be hosting websites, um, but they have free commercials. Um, so I would say if there's any one place that you can easily invest in technology, it's hosting. So go with a host that's more turnkey that allows you to spin up uh, like a Magento site. But ideally, you really want it to be a, a dedicated box or at least a virtual private server. So uh, th there's plenty of uh, and virtual private servers allow you to have a root access. Uh, so if you're getting into more sophisticated customizations uh, and, you're, and you have a developer or development team, uh, they're going to want root access and, 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 and higher levels of access. Uh, so definitely consider a, a virtual private service kind of as a baseline. I wouldn't go lower than that. Um, and obviously you can go with like an Amazon and just go with a cloud solution to, that, that could scale however you need. Any uh, more questions? All right, everyone. Thank you. Appreciate it.